Hello everybody, I am Folygon, and in this new series, I am going to be doing some sculptural studies here inside of ZBrush. I'm going to be keeping them a little more software agnostic though, which is why the user interface, as you can see, is hidden from view. My hope here is that someone even doing a traditional sculpture in maybe wax or clay or anything else might be able to follow along as we focus on form instead of more software focused tutorials. So in this series, I am going to be personally studying some different topics. Uh, in this one, I'm going to be sculpting a foot. Some people might think that once you reach a professional level where you're working in the industry, that's it, right? That's the end, the goal, the finish line. Uh, but <laughs> the truth is that art is a lifelong journey. And for me, when I got that professional job, you know, working full time in the industry years ago, that was just the beginning. So I still study. Uh, if I ever give the impression that I know it all, I absolutely do not. Uh, this is going to be some self-study as I work on a foot. Um, and you can feel free to follow along if you want. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and get started here. I have some references up on my other monitor. If you see me looking over there, I highly encourage you to use some references, maybe even take some pictures of your own foot. Uh, but let's go ahead and get started. And I think a sphere, which is normally where I start, is probably not the best place for us to start today with the shape of a foot. So let's go ahead and change that to a cube. Get a nice box here to start us off. I will just begin by starting to shape that up into a simple wedge. The reason why I wanted to do specifically feet today uh, was, well, I haven't really sculpted that many feet um, in comparison to a lot of the other stuff that I have sculpted during my career. So I have sculpted a number of different subjects um, and we're actually breaking symmetry immediately as you can see here. Uh, but feet is one that I feel like I could definitely improve on. As I said, it's not something that I create very often and it's definitely a place where I have noticed uh, in my own personal work where I would like to see some improvement. So I am going to continue down that line of thought here with a little bit of some self-study. So this works great for anatomical study. As I've mentioned in the past, if you are someone that wants to practice or quote unquote learn anatomy, uh, which is not really quite a phrase that you should be using as you will never really learn anatomy. It is a lifelong study and a lifelong pursuit. Uh, but you can practice anatomy, and if you are looking to practice anatomy, what I recommend doing is just try sculpting. Try sculpting whatever you're working on, maybe a particular project, whatever it is, and when you reach a point where you get stuck or where you're confused or don't understand something, study that particular subject. So that is my recommendation there. I'm not particularly confused about feet, but um, it is something that I think could be quite a bit better with my work. Oh, and I completely forgot here, I'm starting to block out this flat foot, uh, but I'm actually going to have this at an angle. I want to have uh, some nice gesture to this foot. I want to get a visually interesting pose, create something a little more fun, a little more unique, and have the foot be up on the toes. Maybe something like this. Uh, probably quite a bit stronger of an angle turn here though. So let's get that finished before we continue forward. Now, I am just working with low poly geometry, very simple shapes. Uh, at least for the time being, I'm going to start adding more resolution to this very soon, uh, once I feel comfortable doing so with this very simple blockout. Uh, for those that do not know, a blockout is just the process for creating the most simple shapes for your form. Uh, in this case, I am focusing on things like silhouette, a little bit of proportion, uh, and just trying to get something on my canvas as quick as I can. All right, in terms of a basic shape to start adding some geometry on top of, in terms of uh, additional resolution, uh, I think this is a good place to start. So let's go ahead and just start shaping this up. I'm just selectively kind of inflating a few areas, potentially narrowing some form here. We are missing some information from the silhouette, so we should probably get that in before we continue too far forward. And we should probably reduce the size or thickness of this cylinder based off of some of the forms that I'm seeing here. 
maybe a little bit more of a volume for that front plane of the foot coming forward and then rolling down towards the toes. Something like this looks pretty good. Get it away from feeling quite so flat. We will work on those angles. I'm getting a little more volume down here as well. As you can see, I haven't sculpted any toes, not yet. My intention right now is to, essentially if you move forward too quick on that kind of thing, you end up kind of creating a little bit more work for yourself because if you end up creating toes right now when everything else is so incorrect, you're just gonna have to redo it later. So instead of wanting to redo that later, I'm going to hold off and continue working on the main shapes first. Uh, I often see people kind of rush ahead to these, you know, stages where they think, oh, I need to get all this done as fast as possible. And uh, sometimes it's okay. It's okay to just kind of slow it down, focus on getting that main shape first, and then come on back and add stuff like toes later. I will go ahead and merge all of that together into one shape. And I'm going to flip the foot around to match my one of my references so I can get some more gesture in this foot. I wanna get something more of a straight edge over on this side that kinda of curls up into this heel, kinda of flowing a little bit like this, kinda of this general straight edge into a C curve, something like that. And then I want this really strong kind of push in right through here, creating this nice kind of dip in or concave surface from this view. Really kind of throwing the weight of the foot around. And look at those toes, those are fun. What are essentially our basic shape for our toes are getting a little crazy, but that's all right. We'll, uh, we'll just kind of fix those, flatten them up for now and come on back to those here in a brief moment. Still gotta work on this main shape a little bit more though. So you'll notice that I have gone ahead or I am going through the process of combining these two pieces and the resolution of my geometry, as you can see just looking at the surface, it um, decreases quite a lot. It's becoming a lot more faceted, a lot more ugly kind of. Um, I would advise people to, uh, during these early stages, not worry about that really much at all. Your objective during this early part of sculpting is not to worry much about the resolution of your surface, but more so just getting that silhouette down. Uh, you can worry about the resolution of your surface later, but as you can see here, no matter how messy or really low resolution this form is, as I lower that even more, the silhouette doesn't change at all. So I'm just kind of flipping back and forth between that really low res version and this, and the silhouette doesn't change. So Focus on what's important, which during this stage is not resolution, not your surface, but uh, is in fact just this primary shape. Very, very difficult thing to uh, focus on. It might sound like I'm beating a dead horse, but um, it's a tough, it's a tough thing to do. And sometimes doing what I just did there, that little silhouette check, just kind of change your color to black. That's a very helpful way to uh, get your mind away it almost seems like we're working on something 2D now, but in a way you kind of are during the blockout stage. Uh, it can be very helpful to do that and just kind of focus in a little bit more concretely on silhouette. Getting a little heel going on back there. We probably need quite a bit more volume rolling through this part of the foot to increase some of the volume down here as well. Get kind of that pad of the foot down here rolling down into the big toe, some of this more information down here, and maybe fill in just a little bit of that cavity. I don't want that to be too strong. Mirror it back to the other side. I find this to be very helpful to kind of flip things around. It's kind of like seeing it for the first time. Little things will start to stick out. Sometimes big things. <laughs> a couple big things here that we need to work on and change. Still missing some ankles. Just want to make sure some of this is heading in the proper direction first, though. Uh, and then I'll sketch some ankles here on top. All things in time, right? It's not about what your sculpture or your art looks like right now while you're working on it. It matters what it looks like when you take your pen away and say you're finished. That is the important part. 
So never be ashamed to kind of show a work in progress or uh, be ashamed of what things are looking like during the early stages. It's going to change later. It, it does not matter at all. Not important. Well, somewhat important because, <laughs> because you're taking it somewhere else, but um, not important in the fact of thinking of it as uh, showing off, you know, a finished piece or something to be embarrassed uh, of that you're working on. All right, a couple of fun ideas here for the ankle. Uh, we're going to look at a couple techniques that I like to just play around with here for adding form. Just quickly sculpt something on top and just kind of add something like this. The other technique we'll look at is going to be more akin to a traditional uh, technique that you might utilize. For your ankles, anatomically speaking, the outside one is a little bit lower than the inside one. So if anything, I should lower that a little bit and just work on getting a stronger plane change through this area. And then I'll fill in some of this volume as this wraps around. We're also missing that main good old Achilles, everybody's favorite tendon that they know by name. <laughs> Not too many others that can be called out by name, but that's a popular one, very uh, definitive one, very easy to notice, very easy to see. I'll also say, hey, a lot of feet are different. There are a lot of rules of thumb or, you know, anatomical truths that you could look at, like a six head, seven, eight head rule, if you are familiar with any of those. But um, very few people follow those rules perfectly um, and completely. And if they have, they most likely have had some kind of work done. Uh, but either way, keep in mind that when you're sculpting a foot, not everybody's foot is going to follow these, these perfect exact rules. Uh, we have some wonkiness going on. We will fix it. We'll get it feeling, you know, anatomically sound. But don't be, um, don't be a huge stickler for having things feel 100% like uh, what someone might say that something needs to feel like or look like. Not everybody's face is going to follow this ideal in terms of where things will line up. Sometimes those are warped quite a lot. The same thing is true with feet. As promised, over here on this ankle, instead of adding in uh, or just sculpting on top, I'll just insert a little ball, a little sphere of digital clay, and use that. So uh, if you were sculpting traditionally, this is definitely a bit closer to the technique that you would do because you don't have a brush that can just magically add clay on top, right? You have to uh, take a little piece of clay and slap it on there. In this case, I'll just use a little ball and uh, pull this up, something like that. I actually like this technique a little bit more, but I wanted to show uh, both processes so that you could get an idea of some different techniques that you could possibly implement. Now I can never remember which angle shoots further forward, so typically I check my own foot. And uh, this is the head, I wanna say of the tibia, if I'm not mistaken. Coming down, main shin bone, and then the uh, fibula on the outside edge here, which should be much smaller as well, and a little bit further back. The bones in your leg, we're not really focusing on the leg too much, but the bones in your leg interact in a very similar way to your forearm. A little bit of pronation, supination, kind of twisting going on there. Not hugely important for what we are working on now. We just need to get that in the basic place. Also, just as a quick note on anatomical form in general, something that I say quite often is that you're not going to need this anatomical knowledge to sculpt a foot. It is not necessary. If you can sculpt what you see, you are going to be golden. Knowing what's going on underneath the surface is not a prerequisite to sculpt feet or sculpt a face or anything else. Uh, will it be helpful? Yes. Yes, it absolutely will be helpful. Uh, is it necessary? No. If you can sculpt what you can see, you can sculpt anything. Now my question is, thinking about my own foot, flexing it a little bit here, I'll have to find some additional reference or take another look down there. <laughs> but I believe this becomes more pronounced when your foot is in this position. The reference that I'm using is not uh, exceptionally uh, well defined in that area. So I'll have to take a Take a closer look. I also think we'll be adding in 
a little bit of tilt this direction. We'll be working on this area here soon as well. Potentially getting a little bit of a concave gentle C curve through this area and working on blending all this together. Let's try pushing this rotation, adjusting the position of our ankle here, really pushing that forward. I like that angle a lot more. I want there to be a lot of dynamic, what's the word, dynamism, I guess, in this pose. I want it to feel like this uh, foot is very firmly planted on these toes here, kind of like you're standing up on your toes. When you do that, some things are going to um, rotate quite a bit more than I think what we had there. Or at least to push that gesture even further, that is something that I would like to achieve. Let's see if we can round out this side a little bit more. You'll notice that I have a lot of these sharp edges on here. This is something that I really enjoy doing, and it's something that I recommend you do as well. It's a very powerful technique to recognize where your planes, your surface is changing direction. If you take a look at this from the silhouette, we come out, in, and then around this way. Very easy to see that. Uh, that is very important knowledge. And as you continue working, you will eventually soften that down later. But being able to see that is incredibly, incredibly important. So for example, now I could start relaxing this form, getting something a bit more soft, continuing to work on that. I think it's still a little bit too far this direction. Uh, I think we could play with the flow here and kind of bring these shapes in together, maybe create some really nice rhythm something that we might be able to integrate on the other side a little bit. We'll see how that goes. Obviously, I think a little overdone, but that is all right. Exaggeration is a lot of fun when sculpting. I find it also a very powerful tool to help you figure out information like where something uh, or how far something can be pushed until you kind of break it, and then taking that and nudging it back a little bit till it starts to work again. All right, just going to continue working this primary shape a little bit more, take a look at some different angles, probably do another quick mirror and add on some more volume here in a few areas to just make sure things are feeling okay. Uh, if you are curious about some of the tools that I am using, I have a lot of videos that go into uh, great depth about that. I recently did some live streams where I talked about a ton of different tools even had some time for a Q&A at the end. Both of those are uploaded on my channel here very recently. I'll throw a link down in the description as well if you're interested in checking those out and uh, maybe learning some more technical stuff here specifically for ZBrush. Got a couple weird things aligned here with the back of the uh, heel coming up for this Achilles. Uh, it feels a little kind of off there. And I think it's because this is built up too much here on one side. I nudged it over a little bit as well, but also um, maybe just a little bit too strong on one side compared to the other, making it feel imbalanced. Looking at that from some different angles can definitely help you see a little bit better with what's going on. Very important for sculpture. Look at things from as many angles as you possibly can. You are not a 2D artist, you are a 3D artist, and you have to make it look good from every possible angle and every possible ankle. That was a horrible joke. <laughs> uh, not too much cleanup at this stage, just a little bit of flattening to a few areas to make sure that these planes are still reading well. Um, some of this texture can be nice to come through for more of a skin, skin-like feel, something a little more organic. As long as your main uh, primary shapes are still good, then uh, you should be a little okay kind of working forward, keeping some of that. You have to be careful though, because it's very easy to, in this messiness, kind of hide some, some poor primary form. Um, a good foundation is extremely important, and it can be tough to see some of that when you have a lot of this surface texture happening. Just continuing to very slightly work the shape, spin around. Uh, I'm not working on one specific area. You'll notice I jump around a lot, and that is because I am just in a process of taking what I already have and trying to refine it a little bit without um, 
without really losing the main shape, the main silhouette. Uh, if it does need to have a change, I will, of course, make it. Uh, if you're having trouble seeing some of these mistakes, just take a brief moment, step away, come back with fresh eyes. It makes a world, a world of difference. For instance, this area sticking out over top of the heel, not quite as strong as what we would normally see. We'd see something more a little bit on top without this subducting quite so far underneath. So I think a little uh, push in, some narrowing for this ankle, mainly from this side, is going to be very important to continue this foot forward in a structurally sound way. We are not going to be working on the top of this foot, so I'm just going to chop it off and uh, continue to work on this main shape down here. So a little bit of a cross section right there, but I think that is fine. A little bit easier to narrow without worrying about the connective area up top feeling quite so strange. Let's get a little more arch through this area and possibly a bit more of a straight edge over here to contrast that curve coming in. A little more through there. And it might be over exaggerated, but I kind of like that aspect. We kind of have this nice overlap flowing through here, this form kind of wrapping uh, around to the other side. I think that creates a really interesting shape. I think that this is maybe a little too strong of a dip in still. So let me fill that in. So we get this really interesting flow through here. I think that's pretty fun. My mistake was gathering many references from a flat foot view and then wanting to do something like this. So I think I, I will uh, have to find a couple more views here uh, because I think some of the proportions here around the heel specifically and ankle are really bothering me. And I don't want to make too many changes without having those references close at hand. References, very powerful, very important. And um, really should never, in my opinion, uh, be doing a study without references. That kind of defeats the purpose. I found one where we get a much stronger angle pulling through from that heel, which I really like. I think that's one of the main areas where I'm getting visually thrown off, starting to change the direction of this plane. Quite strong. Quite a strong difference there. And these things can be hard to notice when you have so many other things going on on your screen. You got a lot of different things that you're working on at once, so just focus on one at a time. But don't be afraid, like I said, to jump around often. So maybe work in one area for a few seconds or a couple minutes and then jump around to somewhere else. Just trying to really push the curve and gesture of these toes. See how far I can push those until they break and then nudge them back a little bit more. I am now going through a process of lowering the resolution of my foot. Not really something that you can do with traditional clay, but the less polygons you have in digital sculpting or even 3D modeling in general, the easy it is to manipulate your shape. Uh, so I have lost a little bit of my form there with these changes, but it is something that I can get back through a process called projection, uh, which if you are unfamiliar with, is a very powerful process that involves taking uh, one piece of geometry and projecting that form onto another. In this case, the high resolution piece that I had there that was going through a dynamic topology state that I was just kind of iterating on. And now I have projected that form onto this piece, which utilizes now something called subdivision levels. Uh, also a very powerful tool, just in a little bit of a different way. If you are brand new to this process and want to learn more about that, I'll throw in a great tutorial that I have down in the description for you guys. I really like that plane change that I'm getting flowing up through the foot this direction. Is it anatomically perfect? Absolutely not. Uh, but it is creating a really cool shape. Um, so I want to try to keep some of that exaggeration in there and start to play with this foot pushing it towards something more believable while keeping in uh, some of the nice rhythms that I have going on around this area and try to expand upon those into the rest of the foot. Now I want this to be uh, not an extremely wrinkly or old foot, an old foot, <laughs> but I want it to be a, a little bit more of a younger, uh, younger foot 
And because of that, that is such an awkward thing to say. An old foot or a young foot. Sounds like someone with a foot fetish. Uh, but in this case, I am not going to have too many wrinkles going on, but I will still have a little bit in areas like back here on the heel. No matter what, uh, even with you know a child, if you were to you know put your foot in this extreme pose up on your tiptoes, up on the balls of your feet, uh, you are still going to have some wrinkling going on uh, in these areas of compression. So that is something that I will have to get in here later on. Uh, but you don't want to rush these kinds of things just like with the toes that I still haven't put into place. Uh, you cannot add a secondary form, which is what a wrinkle would be, on top of a primary form, which is what our ankle would be, uh, until you have that primary form into a place where you are extremely happy with it, uh, to where you feel like you cannot change that primary form or make it any better. Then at that point, then you can add some wrinkles on top and uh, continue playing with that shape. No reason to add wrinkles on top of a primary form uh, until you are perfectly happy with it. Otherwise, you're just going to have to redo it all. And that is not something that we want. I continue to make my foot less wide, playing with the proportions of that. And I'm fine with that. I think that starts to feel uh, even better, although still, still quite messy uh, back here. Some stuff we can play with as we continue forward. I'm really starting to enjoy this kind of S-curve that I get coming down the uh, plane here of the foot, the front plane of the foot, down into the toe. So we kind of snake through here. I think that's a really cool rhythm. And anatomically speaking for this pose, it's something that I am uh, definitely seeing in some of my references. So if I can exaggerate that even more, I think that would be awesome. I think that's a really cool rhythm. Maybe reduce some of the uh, strength to this shape to attempt to continue that curve on the opposite side and probably reduce this form quite a lot as well. In this pose, I'm not really seeing a lot of indication in the surface to indicate uh, such a huge plane change. So we'll soften that out quite a bit. All right, I wanna get a really strong turn coming up the heel into the ankle do something that feels like this would be facing the right direction this edge here i think is going to need to be much more straight coming up into a foot otherwise the person is going to feel like they're leaning forward so we get this really nice tight turn there although it is something that i will relax and loosen here uh coming up through the achilles so softening some of that and blending some of that form through there. And then there is going to be, as I mentioned, some folds going on through this area, kind of like the crinkling of the skin coming together. Very similar actually to working with folds of clothing, uh, but here in this instance, I'm just going to keep this a little bit more rounded, maybe a little bit more there, but otherwise that is starting to feel like it is heading in the correct direction. So we'll leave that for a little bit, come back, let's take a look at a few other areas. Hopefully our foot doesn't feel like it's leaning one direction too much. Don't want that. And it still feels like it's leaning a little too strongly. Toes? Toes, you say? You want toes? <laughs> I'll give you some toes. All right, it's toe time, which is maybe the weirdest thing I've ever said here on my channel. Uh, <laughs> let's, um, let's take this whole front area and probably just chop it off. So the reason why I am going to do this is I think it's going to be a lot easier to just use that form that I had uh, previously here, this now, just this front piece, as a placeholder. Uh, so that is essentially what we had there. I could go through this shape and in an attempt to just kind of pull through this area, and start to carve out some toes like this. I think this is going to be very difficult. Uh, if you remember up here on the ankle, I showed those two different processes uh, for just inserting geometry or for working in a very similar way where you could just sculpt on top like I just did there. I think it's going to be a lot easier to just insert one toe at a time here and potentially even duplicate some toes to save us some time. So we could 
utilize actually this front piece that I was kind of carving in there at first for something like the uh, big toe. So I could just take that piece, so reusing our placeholder from earlier, and just kind of repurposing that into the uh, most basic shape we could here for some kind of big toe. Now, at first, I you know don't recommend spending a lot of time on this. Just kind of get something really simple, really basic. Uh, it's fine for it to be messy. Keep it as messy and low poly as you can. Not as messy as you can, but as low poly as you can. Focusing on uh, big shapes here. I want to get something that's a little bit more flat on top and a little bit more rounded on the bottom, which I think creates a really nice contrast. This is something that I do with my fingers on my character's hands. And uh, I think the same is going to be a uh, very nice aesthetic down here for the feet as well. Now for the big toe, we will have to get kind of this transition coming out to the knuck, the knuckle. I believe they're called knuckles on toes, right? Same, same for the uh, fingers. So something like that coming forward at first. And then for the bottom, we'll have to get that kind of coming up into the opposite side, which is going to be uh, kind of that uh, creased area separating the joints. So I'll soften these out here later, but at least first I like to, as you know, keep things a bit sharp, uh, planed out. I find it a very nice way to work. Maybe a little bit larger here? Oh gosh, no. No, 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 way too big. That's fine where it is. So there's also going to be some folding here around the toes with the skin uh, because you have the same thing going on that we do back here with the ankle, which is that things are kind of bending at this really strong angle. As you can see here with my wrist, creating that skin fold. It's gonna be the same exact thing down here with this toe. All right, now I'm just gonna work on the shape of the toe a little bit more. Get some more taper, kind of flatten out this top area, and just kind of gently work this into something a little bit more accurate. Still too rounded on top. Also, one thing to keep in mind about your digits, whether they be fingers or toes, uh, they are not the same width all the way down. So in all things anatomical and organic, you want to avoid parallel lines. A really great place to do that is here on your toes and fingers. Same thing with the length of a leg or an arm. There's going to be some taper in those shapes coming from a thick or a large to a small or a small to a large. Uh, similar to what we have now happening here with this shape. Okay, so now I will merge those back together. We only have one toe so far, but we can kind of blend through that shape. Continue to work on that area. A lot of cool things, I think, that we can work on through there. But for now, that'll be fine. And for now, we can also add some more volume down here or potentially even just raise this toe up slightly. All right, so something a little bit more like that in terms of volume for the bottom there. I flattened the bottom of the big toe. This will definitely be something we work on more as we continue forward, but I think it's important that we also get our other toes into place uh, before we do too much work on just one area. Just taking a brief moment to work on some of the shape of my foot, a little bit more here from the profile. And then going back down to the toes to continue working on those. Uh, but as I've mentioned many times here during our study session today, very important to uh, jump around, not get tunnel vision, working on one area and kind of let everything else fall to the wayside. Now for the other toes, I am going to create one toe and then repurpose that. Uh, so just starting off with this basic wedge shape here, which will be a little bit longer for that first digit and then shrink down quite quickly as we cascade down the foot here. We will just position those, or that main shape, roughly like so for this wedge, and go ahead and do the exact same thing that we did on the big toe, which is going to be taking a chunk, and then using that here, and now start repurposing this into that basic shape for our next toe. So I could potentially even use the uh, basic shape that I have there for the big toe, uh, but just to get a little extra practice and continue working here on what we already have, let's just stick with this for now. So now just simplifying the shape, 
continuing to work on that, making sure that I'm getting the main shapes that we can find in the silhouette. So I'm starting to get uh, the hits for the knuckles there, just kind of like what I did over here. Not really worried about the resolution right now, just keeping it pretty simple. And I'll continue to adjust that shape here as I continue forward. So normally we would be able to see more joints here, an additional joint or segment of the toe. Uh, but in this pose, I think that the uh, shape is quite a bit more simplified, being a bit more similar to the rhythms that we would see in a large toe, or the big toe over here. So I am going to have that be a little bit more simplified there on the top with just the single, uh, single uh, hit or joint separation there. All right, I want to get a little bit more roundness to the tops of these shapes so that I can get a toenail in here eventually. I don't want it to be completely flat. I also want to adjust the length of this shape quite a bit. So that's something that I'll be playing around with here for just a few minutes. And we're still feeling a little too boxy, so just kind of adjusting that a little bit more here. Rounding out some of those hard, plain changes that I added in before. As I said, it's good to put those in at first, understand your shape a little bit better but eventually you will have to come through and soften and round uh, a lot of those forms back out. All right, getting some nice rounded shapes over there on that big toe, we'll do the same thing here. I'd like to work on this uh, uh, secondary toe a little bit more uh, before I continue forward because I plan on duplicating this uh, to repurpose it, it for the smaller toes cascading down the rest of the foot. So I want this one to be a little bit more refined. Okay, there is our quick and basic toe, so now it's just a matter of repurposing that and duplicating it uh, a few times here, so something, uh, unfortunately, that you can't do with uh, traditional mediums. So we'll duplicate that, bring it down here. That's probably a little bit too much of a change there in scale, although we will see once we get them all in here. Proportions are definitely something where you have to have... Um, all of them in place, or everything you're going to be comparing against, before you start working on things like scale or size comparison to everything else. You have to have everything there first before you worry about the uh, proportions. It's impossible to work on proportions without being able to compare it to everything else. It's just as simple as that. So there's our basic shapes for our toes. Uh, very simple, just kind of duplicated pretty quick here across the uh, spectrum down the rest of the foot. Uh, each one of these is a bit more uniquely shaped, creating some deviations in things like how square a toe can be or how round or pointed it can be can start to uh, make them feel a bit more unique as well. So just playing around with a few things here to uh, push that a little bit further. So I might make this pinky toe a bit more stubby and round. It's kind of how my toe works, <laughs> a bit more stubby on that side like so and probably a little bit further down if we want to actually connect these all. Uh, so I think I'm going to widen out a lot of these potentially as well. We'll have to play with that. You'll notice that I am keeping some room between these toes. And the reason for that, it won't always be the case, but at least right now I want to merge these back together with the main shape of the foot. And to do that, you have to utilize what is called a Boolean operation. A Boolean combines geometry, it combines form together. And when you do that, it is not going to just look at this area where they are connected at the base. It's gonna look at anything that is touching. And if the toes are touching here, where I currently have these gaps, they will fuse together there. And that is not something that I want. As I mentioned long ago, uh, I could have just kind of carved in and sculpted the shapes that way. This way you have a little bit more control uh, and we do not want that to merge together. So let's, let's avoid that from happening. So I am doing a quick mirror on my foot now that we have the toes in there, uh, just so we can kind of look at everything as a whole, see how it's all shaping up. If there's any big changes we wanna make, maybe start to push on straightening this backside a little bit more uh, as we've kind of played with that edge a little bit here and there probably go through and do some some changes like softening out some of these areas start to just 
bring things to a more finished and revised and refined uh, stage here, getting rid of these sharp plane changes that anatomically speaking don't make too much sense, but in terms of plane changes and just understanding how our form uh, is turning, very much it does so make sense. Uh, but here, we're starting to get closer to that finished, uh, that finished state, so I'll just start to smooth those out, blend it all together, and get something feeling a bit more closer to um, anatomical accuracy. I am liking a lot of the uh, texture from my brush that I've got on here, so I want to retain a lot of that. I don't want to go through and smooth everything out and make it uh, this crystalline, perfect surface. I would much rather have uh, some of the sketchy nature here. Um, you know, in terms of art style, it's really up to you for what you want to experiment and play with. Uh, at least here for this study, I say we don't need to refine it too much. If texture for skin is something that we want to add on later, uh, we could potentially look at that. But at least for now, just still maintaining a lot of that kind of sketchy nature that we've kept through here. I think uh, we might even be able to convert some of that into some interesting uh, skin texture later on. Now how the toes connect here to the foot is going to be just as important as the toes themselves. So I'm taking some extra time just to make sure that things are lining up so that when I make that Boolean operation that I was mentioning before, I don't have to do a whole lot of extra work to clean and blend this all together. Uh, right now it could use a little bit more refinement, uh, but we'll go ahead and do that here very soon. Get things ready to go here on our foot, it's starting to come together. Just taking a look at some of the shapes that have built up over time here on the bottom of the foot, I'm really liking a lot of this. It feels very, um, very close to some of the folds that we might see, which was a little bit intentional. I could have been more intentional with the directionality of my brush strokes through this area in an attempt to get that to roll in a way in which the skin would naturally fold, which is more so this direction here. Uh, but even still with you know what we have here, it kind of alludes to that information. And I think it feels really nice. So definitely something that I'll have to play with more moving forward. So checking out the merge together on all of these shapes, not the dirtiest merge in the world. And with some refinement through these areas to help blend them together even more, I think we'll be in a really nice state to continue uh, fixing up these, these little dinky toes down here. Okay, so I have now merged and uh, very quickly uh, put us back into a state where we have subdivision levels. And now I can have a lot more control through this area, working on getting you know, some of this kind of creased area through here. It's definitely something that I would need to play around with a little bit more getting some of these skin folds through here. This will be something that uh, will be a little bit more on the time consuming side, but in terms of the basic shape, I think we're heading into a really good direction here. Very happy with the progress that we've made there. Uh, again, we could have done that from the very beginning by just um, sculpting directly on top. I mean, really it comes down to preference, what you enjoy uh, doing yourself. For me, I find I get a little bit more control out of working the way of uh, separate parts, but to each their own. If you have not worked that way before, I highly encourage you to try it out, uh, and vice versa. You know, if you're you're always splitting things into parts, I highly encourage you to try out a, a few different techniques where you maybe keep everything together and just kind of sketch it out, carve in your shapes like that, uh, like we did for the ankle and for the rest of the foot. Lots of different techniques to kind of play around with there. Now, in terms of toenails, there are a lot of different ways we could do that as well. We could just carve them directly on top. Uh, we could create a separate piece to represent that as well. That also works very nicely. Now for toenails, what I will often do is just grab myself another cube, which is where, ironically, we kind of started here with our whole foot. And we, whoa, we'll just use this to kind of flatten and uh, get into position here on one of our toes, for instance, our large toe, and get that relatively into place at first. So when I start to smooth or subdivide that, you can kind of already see the direction that we're heading in here, which is a bit more toenail shaped. Uh, just a nice benefit of uh, subdivision levels and adding form to your geometry that 
really kind of does most of the work for us. Maybe a little bit more thick though. Right now it doesn't feel round enough. So maybe something a bit more like that. That feels a little bit more natural than uh, being completely flat on top. Now I like to just turn on transparency and kind of align things a little bit more closely here. Once you get the basic shape and placement for your toenail, then you can take some time to start carving in the inset area for the bed of the nail and continue to work on that shape. A little bit upturned here, so I think we'll just rotate that down, round it back out, and have that in place like this. So uh, there's some asymmetry going on here, which I actually uh, very much like. I don't want that to be perfectly symmetrical. That's very boring. Uh, so now I can show you the process for how you could go about um, adding in that kind of bed of the nail. Uh, very simple, and even so many ways to go about this. You can just simply carve in on the sides of the nail like so, and on the back, kind of just giving a little area for that to live. You can then uh, do a quick mask and continue to work on this area. I, in particular, just like to very quickly kind of find that general area that this is going to sit on. You don't even have to carve in like I did here. You can just, you know, either mask it off or kind of build it up or push it down like this. And then after you create that little bit of a cavity here, you gotta be careful, you don't wanna carry this forward too far. I keep it a little bit more flat towards the front of the toenail. And then uh, out here on the sides, I will often even inflate or build this area up ever so slightly, many different brushes and you know ways to go about doing this as well. And just kind of play with that. Maybe something very quickly like that. And in just a few seconds here, we've already started to push that into a state where it feels pretty believable. Uh, with some more refinement though, you can carry that even further. Uh, but in terms of the basics, that's what I like to do here. And if your toe's feeling a little wonky, I would say it's okay. <laughs> Nobody's toes are perfect. Mine certainly aren't. I got some wonky toes. My toe might be a little bit more misshapen than this. But um, for the most part, you're, you're fine to keep things a little uneven. I think um, that gives life to your sculpture and uh, helps it to feel more, more realistic in some regards. All right, so there is one nail. I'll go ahead and create uh, about four more here. Now, if you were smart, what you would do is when you were creating your first initial toe, you could have actually carved in and created all the additional form that you needed here, and even maybe a toenail initially to uh, save yourself some time when you duplicated that first toe. Uh, for me, I didn't think of that at the time, so <laughs> we, will, we will be doing this just uh, a few more times after this one here. For me, my pinky toe, personally, is actually a lot shorter than uh, my other toes, especially the nail, a uh, much shorter distance than what I have here. So that might be something I have to integrate into my sculpt. Put a little of myself into my artwork. Being a little lazy here with some brush strokes just to do this a little faster and depress in that information so that I can quickly get to a state where I can inflate the opposite side. And if you push it in a little too far, I honestly think that's okay. If, if nothing else, I'd rather have it pushed in too far than not enough. I'm sure many of you while watching this have probably been curious about things like resolution or polygon count uh, as I continue forward or even right now here on my toes. Like how many polygons do I have? That is really not something that uh, I care about. And I really don't think it's something that you should care about either. Uh, and what I mean by that is you should not be worried about a specific number. There's not a specific stage or portion of the process where you should be at X number of polygons. You should always have enough resolution to achieve exactly what you want and no more. Uh, you do not want to waste form or waste resolution where you don't need it. And you want to make sure that you have enough resolution where you need it. Uh, so as we were working on those very early beginning stages, if you remember, I was just looking at the silhouette, keeping the surface very messy, very faceted. And for that, I did not need 
a line of resolution. If you can get to a place, create a shape, try to take that and lower the resolution on it and see if that makes any difference. If it doesn't make any difference to your form that you have on screen, just keep lowering the resolution until you get to a place where it starts to. That is where you should be. So no more than you need for each part of the process. Here, I need a little bit more resolution to uh, make sure that I can get in here around the nail bed and add in some of these uh, additional forms. But as you can see, because of that, my surface is getting pretty messy. Some of it feeling a bit organic, some of it not. So I'll be adjusting that here in just a brief moment. Little pinches here and there to exaggerate things like the area around the cuticle here in the back can feel very nice as well. It's a technique that I like to utilize here with my nails. Maybe something that you can integrate as well. All right, two down and just a few more to go. Now that I have the uh, rest of the form in place, just moving these around should be pretty easy. So we'll do that here pretty quick. All right, so we got a lot of toenails now. Let's start refining the area around them just a little bit more. For me, my little toe actually kind of points up a little bit here like this. And it's quite a bit shorter as I already mentioned. So I'll play with shortening that, adjusting the toenail to fit a little bit more accurately. And honestly, I think a lot of these nails are just a little long, so I'm gonna shorten most of these. If I need to make the toe longer, I will, but I think it's fine. All right, we're starting to uh, have some nice progress here down for our toes. What we don't want is to spend so long down here though that we forget about the rest of our foot. The toes are just one part, one part of many. So we'll be going back up to the rest here in just a brief moment after a little bit of softening around some of these areas. A quality that uh, I mentioned earlier with, um, with toes and with fingers is making one side a little bit more round or curvy and one side a little bit more straight or flat. And that is something that I'm trying to integrate into the bottom of these toes, trying to make them more round, more curvy on the bottom, helping to taper into the point, to that top tip where the nail is, is something that I really like. And I think it's pretty close to coming together here. All right, now I'm going to get these toes uh, feeling like they're interacting in a little bit more of a believable way, having some of the skin compressed together, touching, kind of uh, a little bit more compression going on in these areas. Uh, things are still very messy down here. As you can see, I, I've just kind of placed some of these brush strokes on top. Uh, this is something that I, a quality that I'm kind of enjoying right now. So I'm not sure uh, how I would develop on this further. Maybe some inflation to a couple of these areas kind of working with the natural folds that I've already created that kind of came up organically, kind of playing with those. That is a very fun way to take some of your form a little bit further. Um, these, these forms originally, again, if we come back here and look at that process again, just starting with any, you know, any brush that you enjoy using to add form on top of your surface. Uh, I, in particular, uh, use my own personal clay brush, which is available at the link in the description for my gum road. Just by going through here very gently, I am not adding a ton of form here on the surface, but if you look at that silhouette, slowly, very slowly, we're starting to get some of those bumps in the surface. Now, this is a quality of your sculpt that you do not want early on. You do not want that unevenness in your surface. If you have that, your form is going to probably be pretty messy during those stages. This is something that you want to build up a little bit later. So I've just done that a little bit back there. I think that's something that I wanna play with a little bit more here with the rest of the foot, but I think I could push on this even further here. Let's see what that would look like going back over that or a few of these areas with some inflation and just playing with some of these organic forms that I'm seeing here kind of uh, following the shape that I already have. Now with this inflation, you could also do this with any kind of you know standard brush. I am keeping that very, very gentle. I am you know not making any big changes. I'm not coming through and like doing something like this. This looks horrible. We don't want that. I'm just slowly building it up. Some additional things 
that can really exaggerate those transitions would be something like pinches. Pinches are great ways to um, any kind of pinching brush that compresses form together, can be very powerful. And this is just one area, right? This is one example here that we can play with and, and push on that area. And what I'm trying to do is get a little bit more bunched up here in this area and not quite as much not quite as much down here towards the heel where we flatten out. Although I do still really enjoy the quality of this brush stroke. And we get some real nice organic texture down here that we've had built up over a long period of time. So even coming back through there and inflating some of these areas, hitting it back up with some more of these brush strokes. Some of these brush strokes I want to get rid of though, they feel too strong. Like it's very obvious that it's a brush stroke. We can start to make them feel more organic, kind of like uh, just natural fleshy folds by continuing to go over them, but also by going back over them with a little bit of softening, a little bit of smooth can be very nice. Hopefully the larger proportion of this area isn't too wonky. I still feel like there are some things that I could do here. I'm not seeing it currently but it is something that I would like to push on a little bit more. Still feeling maybe a bit awkwardly wide in a couple areas. Maybe a large proportional shift back for this front plane could be something to push on. We might be just too exaggerated in the direction of our foot through this area. Maybe a little bit, a little bit of relaxing here. Just a little can help that feel more natural or help us to see where some of these areas feel more awkward. Like this angle up here, I feel like could actually shift back, feel a bit more pointed coming down. Hopefully that doesn't make the balance of the overall foot feel too different. Still want that weight to feel like it's coming down here a bit more. Mm. We might have lost some of that quality. From here, now that we have everything kind of where it needs to live in general. It's just a matter of refining what we already have. So I am liking a lot of the uh, shapes that we've built up to this point. And I have a lot of shapes that I'm not really uh, feeling too much that I would like to continue to play with. So a little bit of time has elapsed uh, since I last looked at this foot of uh, a couple hours now. And uh, some things are a little bit more obvious, specifically from this direction here, feeling very broken. So I've gone ahead and made uh, some very quick changes to the foot, which I will show you here as we scroll forward, starting to straighten that out a little bit more. There are some other changes that I definitely want to make here um, from some other angles as well, just kind of working on a larger scale uh, bigger idea things in terms of silhouette, etc. Uh, but we are going to continue on here. Some of this stuff, it might seem a little bit more obvious in the moment when you are, uh, you know, taking a look at this, maybe watching this back here on YouTube. You look at something like this and you're like, oh yeah, it's so obvious, you know, look how broken the foot is. But when you're working on something for a long time, it can become tough to notice where some of your mistakes are. Uh, essentially, your brain kind of gets used to looking at something and uh, it becomes difficult to notice where these maybe possibly glaring issues could be. And that is one of the reasons why I strongly recommend doing things like uh, flipping your sculpture around like I've just done here through a mirror function. You can also do this in screenshots in Photoshop and paint, you know, whatever, and just kind of mirror your image. If you don't have something that you can just mirror here for your sculpture quite as easily as I can. Also, of course, just taking a break, step away for a moment and then come back. That is probably one of the most helpful things that you can do uh, for working on uh, something and starting to notice where some of your errors might be. Sculpture is a very slow process and in particular during a study, it's not something that you want to rush. I'm trying to relay what information I already have on uh, this process, as well as what I'm picking up on along the way that's maybe new for me. Little things that I'm noticing, maybe some deviations from the norm, etc. Um, but this is not something that I want to be rushing. 
absolutely not. Uh, so I am trying to, I'm trying to learn here myself along with you guys. Um, as I've said before, you know, I, I don't want to give the impression that I have all the answers. By any means, I do not. Just trying to learn, just like you guys. But uh, hopefully the content up to this point has been helpful, has been informative for you. Uh, from here, it's going to be a lot of refinement, using some different references, noticing some different areas that I want to change, uh, and trying to push on those areas as much as possible. Uh, literally everything from here in terms of process is going to be exactly the same for what we have seen so far. Uh, but this is when I'm going to have to get in and kind of grind out the, uh, the time on this thing. So actually, I think that is a great place for us to end our video working on this foot. Uh, from here, it's really just a matter of repeating what I've already shown you in terms of workflow and process, but just grinding out the time, using additional references, attempting to study and glean more knowledge from them. Uh, but yeah, I think you guys have seen everything from here. It's going to be very repetitive. So I am going to continue working on this foot. I will be showing you the finished version here in this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video here and maybe found it helpful or even slightly entertaining. Uh, if you guys have any questions, throw them down in the comments below. If you want to see more stuff like this as well, let me know down in the comments. We could maybe do something like this again, whether that be anatomical or whether that be a stylized character like I always do, maybe working on some hair, cloth, whatever, sky's the limit. Tons of stuff we could do. Let me know what you guys want to see, and if you enjoy this format, click that subscribe button if you are new around here, and check out the links in the description for things like my courses, brushes, materials, as well as my mentorship program, the Appeal Academy. It's a course and a mentorship all rolled into one. Definitely check those out. Uh, Gumroad's where you can find my brushes and materials, etc. But other than that, I think that's all I got here for you guys. So uh, until the next one, you guys have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video.